everybody, welcome to Robert's train set. This is a bit of an unusual setting for a model railway or a train set uh, video. I'm in my kitchen, not very big. Why am I here? Um, in my last video, um, the trains running one, um, I had some of the network rail um, wagons going around, didn't I, if you remember? These ones. Um, and up until I did the video, they were empty. They had nothing in them. Um, but as you saw, and I, I will put a little clip from that up in this video. So you see. Um, I did have a load uh, as you can see but the load that's in this wagon now is not the same one that was in that video um, I did it a very simple way for that video I just put some screwed up paper in the bottom of the wagon and then poured some of Hatton's uh, ballast um, in into them um, and run them and obviously the danger of that is if you have a derailment you've got ballast everywhere um, no glue nothing so um, I put my thinking cap on I've got one or two they're getting worn out a bit but never mind um, and I thought is there any way you could put a load in a wagon like this um, and I will show you these going around on the layout a little bit so that you can see what they look like Without using any glue um, so this load in this wagon has got absolutely no glue in it at all um, and if you remember um, I have done a video on doing this with a cardboard base and then just gluing the in this particular case coke and that just slots into the wagon like that which is nice and simple I must admit now I'm going to show you um, on, on the counter and it's so clean I'm doing this in the kitchen um, I'm going to show you um, basically what I thought of doing so I'll be back in a minute Right, so here's the wagon, and as you can see, um, from a distance it doesn't look too bad. If you go up really close, you can probably sort of see through the stones. So I'll just show you what I've done with this. I just took this out with the old cocktail stick. Very useful cocktail sticks. I use them to... It's basically that. A TV magazine. Um, oh, there are quite a few available um, rolled up into wassanains into little I don't know what you call them little pieces like this um, you know just rolled up 
and some sellotape um, around them just to hold them and just uh, mould them up, put them in, push them down and pop that in there. So you're asking yourselves how do we hold the load onto the paper? Simple. Double sided tape. Now you can get wide stuff like this um, but the trouble with that is if you use it on there you've got to cut it. So I tend to go for the thin stuff. Now I got this at my local um, pound shop. Uh, you get you know sort of three rolls with it or something for a quid uh, and you can see it's it's less than the width of the wagon you want to do so you just put two you put one layer on and take the protection off and then put another layer over top of that and do that so what I'm going to do in this video is so I'm going to empty that out and I'm going to um, make one of these up for this so we'll have a go at that shall we so here we are, one empty wagon. Um, I've taken the full pages or full pages of the thing and I've cut them down the middle because obviously we only need a certain amount of width, more to save time than uh, anything else. Obviously with the bigger wagons you need a whole page and you do it. So basically the simple thing is you just literally fold it like this, um, just trying to get it about the right width. Maybe a little bit wider. If it's a bit too wide, it doesn't matter. It helps hold it in. So just fold it along like so, the whole length of it. Now I think um, the TV magazines are quite good because it's quite a good quality paper and shiny, isn't it? So it's probably got a little bit of resistance to moisture. Now as you can see, that's a little bit too wide. So what I'm going to do, and it doesn't really matter, just fold that. If you can see that, I've just folded that along the whole thickness of it. I don't know if you can see that, it's a bit difficult, but yeah, so it goes in. And then basically I've got my sellotape uh, here in a, in a dispenser and just take a little bit off. And I think with this I'm going to do it in the middle. So I'll do it in the middle and just take it round and take it round. And then a bit at each end. Bearing in mind that you're going to be cutting the ends off, probably. So just take that round and that round. There we are. And the same the other end. And as you can see, you don't need an awful lot of stuff. A uh, little bit of sellotape. Um, you can use narrower tape if, you, if that's all you've got. It doesn't really matter. So there we are. So we've got it. So I'm just going to trim, get the, get the wagon there. Have a quick look. Yeah, there's plenty of on there. So let's cut that off along that line, which will probably be fairly square. And the same there. So about where my thumb is, leaving your thumb in place, hopefully. And of course it doesn't matter if you cut through the thing. There we are. So I pop that in the bottom. So I'm going to go off now for a minute and just prepare the rest for you. So, um, welcome back. Um, this is where we left off, um, if you remember, um, with the with a piece of paper. 
So in the true uh, spirit of Blue Peter, here are some bits of paper I prepared earlier. And as you see, I've got four. So we've got one already in the wagon. So there's the next one. And that's a bit tight, but it doesn't matter. And the next one is probably a bit loose, as it is. Um, so there I've been. So this is going to be the top one. Um, and it is a bit tight, but again, you need it snug really to the edge of the wagon because it's only going to be the double sided tape that's going to hold your thing. And if it's a bit funny shape, it doesn't really matter. It gives it a bit more character. So where do we go from here? So quite simple really. You just get your double sided tape and I suggest that you try and do it as accurately as you can to the edge. Right. So, without any kinks. So there we are. If you, I don't know if you can see that. So that's over. Turn it over. Get your pair of scissors. Just snip it off. And snip the other end off. And yes, we will waste a bit, unfortunately, but never mind. At a pound for two or three rolls, it's not exactly expensive, is it? And I usually just stick that on the waste. So there we have that. And I've got a little knife here, it's not very long actually, it's just uh, almost at its end. But it's quite good for just uh, flicking off um, if I do it in the right place. Um, it's quite good for just flicking that off. So there we are. So that, remember that bit sticky. So same again. Like so. Here we are, stick it well down. And you obviously have to take the protection off the first bit because otherwise then it's trapped underneath this bit. So again, just uh, cut through, line it up, cut through, take it over there, stick it on that. Try not to put your fingers too much, not protected. Here we are, back on the roll for the next one. Again, use your, make sure it's nicely pushed down. Put your little loss name underneath there. And obviously do, if you've got nice long fingernails or something, you know, which I don't have, you can probably don't need that. You don't need that. But, well. So there we are. So, that's now ready for its load. And this is why I've got this piece of... Uh, the middle part of the uh, paper and I'm not going to use the limestone ballast um, that I use on the other one because it's not a limestone ballast thing. I'm going to use this is actually um, coke I think uh, though it looks good enough for coal so that's what I'm going to use and all you do is you just spread some out on here like so do a little bit because you're not going to waste any of it. Level it out a bit with your finger, like so. Take your sticky piece of uh, rolled up paper and put it down into it. And then push nice and hard, like so. Now you'll find that when you turn it over again, and this time it will, you can see there's loads of little gaps. So again, just uh, over that, just push these on, use your thumb, and push them into place. Now this, um, this isn't probably going to look as good as the other ones, because with the other ones it was a light um, material, wasn't it? And it was a white thing, so really I should have perhaps used black paper for this. So you wouldn't see the white through. So this isn't going to be as good as the other one, but I haven't got any black paper. So I've used what I used last time. And just keep pushing on, keeping it over your piece of paper. So tip it up. And yes, not great, but I'm sure when that's trundling around the layout, and you could always put some, um, if you've got a black felt tip pen, you could always blacken out 
before you put your tape on. I could have thought of that before I did it, couldn't I? There we are, it's all coming to me as I'm doing it. So, okay, not great. You know, there are gaps in it. I don't know if you can see that. Should be able to, but it's fairly, fairly good. And then obviously all you do with that, I give it a bit more of a shake. And you will find that bits do fall off, so, but it's, you know, if, it, if the wagon derails, you haven't got loads of it over. So there we are. And you've got a, you've got a coal load, or a coke load. If you wanted to, you could put some little loose bits in, and then, you know, if it goes over, there's not too many. But I'm happy with that. But I think the idea of doing some black felt might be a good idea. So why am I showing you this point? Um, this is Hornby Curve Point and I've had a lot of trouble uh, recently with locos um, fusing out when they went to go on to the rail that's nearest to us um, which goes along the back scene um, and I couldn't make it out and I tried everything I could I used nail varnish and everything to try but it still arced out so we'll let the 60 go over it and it's going quite slowly so it's um, it would fuse um, and again we can see the loads so how did I overcome it well um, I tried to find out what was caused it why it was hitting and what I found was that the middle of the layer, middle of the rail or the middle of the point was higher than the two outsides um, so this was obviously helping it um, arc I think so um, while we watch the 68 go past um, I will show you now with a um, actually a, a mat you know a coaster mat but it's made of glass I'll show you that after the uh, 60 goes through with our wagons who says you can't have a bit of a little running session with one of these uh, how to's who <laughs> will be crane looking quite nice and then the little carriage so somebody's got somewhere to sit down so as you can see you've got a glass coaster and if you hold it across, and I've used a glass because obviously we don't want to fuse the layout, it's pretty flat. Um, but when I did it before, it was round, so the middle was higher than the two outer rails. So how did I overcome that? Very simply, um, I put two bits of um, packer each side. And obviously with this um, point, in fact with all my points, um, Peter Dixon recommended putting screws um, right by the frog or by the forks there, uh, which does make them very flat and you don't get a lot of um, missing. Um, so I released that a bit, put the packing under and screwed it back down and as you can see they were, they were flat. And now it works absolutely superbly not bad at all um, I've run this over I've run some other locos over and I'm having no problems whatsoever so really weird this model railway lark isn't it you get all these little problems that you might get and uh, <laughs> you have to try and work out how to get them right so um, my memory ran out when I was filming this and in the time it took me to delete some things um, I had a thought. The idea about blacking out the paper with felt tip pen of which I have one here seemed a good idea so I thought I'd better try it so what we have before us now are two loads and I don't know if you can see but when you glint that you can see the sort of white through it. If you do this one, you do get a certain amount, but it just looks, I don't know if it will show on camera, but it just looks a bit darker 
a bit denser. So I'm going to put that in the, the wagon. Like so. And it doesn't look too bad. I mean, when you go up close, yes, you can see it's not all there. But running around the layout, it will look like a load. And I've got a spare one now. So what do you do next? So it's nice and clean, isn't it? So you've got all this on here. So just uh, remember that there are holes in the middle of the paper where the staples went through. So try and get your saved... Um, items and I shall just try and bring that in so just uh, literally you don't waste any you've still got loads loads of stuff um, you know you do loads and loads of wagons with that in this way reason I've done it like this proper model makers will probably want to do it the proper way um, you know like Alan at Dragon Junction does and all the other you know superb modelers that there are um, I wondered about this, if, if you're a, a young lad um, and you're doing this at home and you'd like to have loads in your wagons but your parents won't let you loose with glue and everything, um, this is a way to do it. No glue, fairly clean as you can see, um, fairly readable um, items. The only thing you've got to buy is obviously your load and, and these are £5.50 from Hatton's. Um, and what I would say is if you want to do the, the light load, then use just leave the paper as it is. And if you want to do um, coke or coal or anything that's darker, then blacken it out with a felt tip pen. So I hope this has been helpful. Um, yes, I know they don't look the greatest. And I will show that running around on the layout later on. a quick and easy way to do it and it does really work obviously if you shake if you shake it a lot you will get some bits come off um, it doesn't stick that well um, so you will have a few bits but no glue no mess and obviously you can take it out of the wagons if you want to and have an empty wagon and equally you can take layers of the paper out and have the load lower in the wagon um, which you'll, if you looked at my last, at the bit I showed you, the last wagon did only have a bit of stuff at the bottom. So I hope this has been helpful, as I've said, and uh, I'll see you next time. Bye.